I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. So I decided to take part in another game jam because apparently remaking games for my I Remake Your Games YouTube series, making steady progress on Orion's Throne, creating music and pixel art for my Patreons and doing some commissionable work for clients over the World Wide Web isn't fulfilling enough. I know what you're thinking, I'm secretly a team of elves working 24-7, 365, but you'd be wrong, you're actually thinking of Santa's workshop. Exactly one year ago, I took part in Vim Jam, hosted by Nick, aka Vimlock, because exactly one year ago, I started my game dev journey, and it was largely due to watching Vimlock's channel and becoming inspired by how he made games using Construct 3. Considering I was still new to game development, I was literally over the moon when my game, Collect or Die, ranked 13th and featured in Vimlock's Best of the Jam video. So this year, I've decided to enter again to see if I can do as well as I did the last time. The limitation for the jam was boss. Now, this doesn't mean you have to have a boss fight in your game. A boss can be someone that gives you instructions, characters like Gladys from Portal, or the narrator from the Stanley Parable tell you what to do like a boss would. And the theme was on the edge. I already knew what type of game I wanted to make. I thought to myself, this is so original, nobody else will ever think of this. At the time of making this video, I have no idea what anyone else has submit it, so I'm sure my prediction is wrong, and I've used the most common idea in the jam. My idea was to make a game where you either choose to play as the boss character or the player character, with the gameplay style dramatically changing depending on which you pick, and thereby giving the player a more engaging experience with my game. I had no idea how I was going to incorporate the on the edge part though, but that didn't stop me making a start, as I was sure I'd figured this out as I went along. Turns out it took a few days to think of a way I could make my game fit the theme, and I must admit it turned out kind of like a bit of an afterthought. As my game is set in space, and space has no edges, I decided to lean on the old edge of the universe premise whereby the loser in the game would be sucked into a vortex vanquishing themselves from the known universe forever. It worked, sort of, as part of the story at least, even if not as a working game mechanic. I started with the artwork and designed a simple ship. I knew I wanted the style to be one bit from the beginning for two reasons. Firstly, ever since making Android Negotiator for the Wowie Game Jam, I've really grown fond of the simplistic style. And secondly, I was about to make a game that required two sets of everything, effectively doubling my workload. Remember, I need to build control mechanics for both the ship and the boss. And I also need to build AI for both the ship and the boss. Next, I designed the boss. I made it using a series of bubbles. My inspiration when designing it was from that boss in The Legend of Zelda in the Water Palace. My original idea was that he'd use the bubbles around him to throw at you, but that never actually materialised on account of I simply couldn't get it working under the time pressure. The stars were a simple particle effect, and I made the vortex with a simple sprite that I later gave the water effect. When the player got too close to the back of the screen, I wanted to create an effect where he was pulled slowly into the vortex, but also giving the player a chance to correct and fly out if he was quick enough. I did this by checking the X position of the player. If the player was close enough, I set visible a couple more sprites that I'd already set into position using the every tick set position event. This was a small black hole that also had the water effect and some particles. I also set an X vector to move the player back and reduce the max speed of the ship. If you start to get sucked into the vortex, you'll need to move in the opposite direction for a short time to get out, which in turn limits the maneuverability of the player, increasing the chances that you'll be hit by a projectile. I gave the player two weapons. I wanted more, but time just didn't allow it. I thought that two might get a little repetitive when playing as the ship character, so I added a limit to the number of rockets you started with and the ability to pick them up to restore your rockets by shooting power-ups. I stole the idea for them to fly up into the HUD from Marlin Media. Thanks Marlin. You continue to be a great source of ideas for me when making games. If you don't already follow Marlin Media, there's a link in the description. Go check his channel out for some great Construct 3 content. The nuts and bolts of this game really lie in the playability of the boss character, as otherwise, this game is nothing more than a simple one-bit space shooter. I didn't want the player to be able to control the boss in real time, like with the ship, but instead have a more strategic approach that would require timing and having to make decisions such as using a shield booster to restore damage or make an attack. I created some commands that the player could choose from, but I didn't want them all to be available from the start. As you took damage, more commands would become available, creating a more boss-like experience. You start with two basic attacks and a shield restore ability, which is limited to three uses as the player and six for the AI, for difficulty reasons. There is a cooldown timer 
after every action, which gets shorter based on how much damage you've taken. I wanted the player to be able to use attacks and defences faster the further into the battle you get to add a sense of panic, frustration and increase the action. After you have lost your shield, you'll get two more attacks and the ability to turn invisible, and your shield restore command, if you have any left, will now restore health rather than shield. Finally, when you have less than 50% of your health remaining, you'll be given your last attack command, which is obviously the most powerful. Obviously. You'll get unlimited attacks, but only a set number of defense actions, which gives the player the element of choice, meaning picking when to use them can be the difference between success and failure. When either the ship or the boss lose all their health, the game is over, and you'll get a small cutscene of the loser disappearing into the vortex. The winner now owns the universe. By the power of Grayskull! And you'll be redirected back to the title screen. All the music from this game, along with most of the sound effects, were taken from my sci-fi music pack, which is available to buy from my Twitch page, at the world's most reasonable price. If you support me on Patreon, this is obviously free. Obviously. And speaking of Patreons, I'd like to give a massive thank you and shout out to my amazing Patreon family, James Welch, Basic Terror, Cole, Tomorrow Alexic, Zan, Clone13, Foodle CC, Jet Simon, Retro Galaxy, Alex Fedorov, Fan Van, Olivia Bernier, Arto Wawajas, and Amari Lewis. You guys are awesome, thank you, and I hope you're enjoying the Patreon benefits. And until next time, guys, take care and have a great week.